If you were to design a brand new mirrorless camera, full frame camera for 2019, what sort of features would you include? Some would argue that you would just try to fit in as many features as possible. Well, that's what Panasonic did with the S1R. But is it enough just to have all these features? How does this camera perform in a professional environment? Well, we're gonna find out. This is the Henry's Review. The S1R delivers a 47 megapixel full frame sensor, nearly twice the resolution as the Panasonic S1. And if that wasn't enough, there is even a 187 megapixel high resolution mode for still life photography. Long story short, there's resolution to spare on this camera and it rewards those that get the autofocus right. Panasonic has adopted a new L mount system. This is in partnership with Sigma and Leica. As a result, the lens selection is quite limited. Only about three lenses are available at the time of this recording. But I'm excited to see what is possible when you have three premier manufacturers developing lenses for a single mount system. Shooting with this camera is an exercise in technique and maybe even an exercise itself. The body alone weighs over two pounds and add the 24 to 105 f4 lens and you're looking at nearly four pounds of camera technology to support in your hands. This weight isn't wasted though. Users can expect some high end dust and water resistance in the S1R. Just keep in mind though, if you're going to be using this camera for a long period of time, well, you may want to take some breaks. So now that we're reintroduced to this camera, the Panasonic S1R, let's see how it performs in a professional shoot setting. We have our model getting ready and we have a pretty extravagant look going on. So this is going to be a great test to see how much detail we can pull from this camera. Panasonic has hyped their DFD and artificial intelligence integration as differentiators in the market. But does the continuous autofocus live up to the hype? In short, yes. Whether it's eyes, faces, people, or pets, the continuous autofocus felt very snappy and locked in very quickly. When you look through the viewfinder or the back LCD, you get a clear visual indication that the autofocus is keeping up. I will say though, in some instances, not all, but some of them, the autofocus was a little too jumpy and shifted between shots. Sometimes I'd ask my model to pose in certain ways and as the head tilted or the neck moved, I would see that the autofocus is shifting a little bit more than I intended to. And while you can tweak this a little bit, you may just want to keep in mind that single point or manual focus will come in handy in certain environments. And I feel like it should be said, no, I am not complaining that the autofocus is too fast. You just have to be mindful depending on what your subject is. All right, one more, one more. Nice. Awesome. So the cool thing about this camera is that, you know, despite its size and its heft, when you're in a shoot environment, that's actually things that you will value. Being able to navigate the buttons easily, having that space for your entire hand to wrap around. These are small things that make a big difference. Or in this case, bigger things that make a big enough difference. You get a lot of resolution, but on top of that, you get to shoot up to nine frames per second. And you can have your ISO go as high as 25,600. While the S1 has an extra stop that may be beneficial for video shooters or low light shooters, this camera still offers a lot in terms of resolving power. For most of its ISO range, the noise was either negligible or manageable. In short, you'll have plenty of latitude to capture the image you want. Perfect, all right, you can take a little bit of a break. Um, what's nice about this camera is the white balance ISO and exposure buttons at the top, they have a different feel to it, different texture in some cases, and a different level. So even when I'm looking through the viewfinder, I know which button I'm going after, and that's really crucial in a shoot setting like this, where we have a limited amount of time to get the shots that we're looking for, being able to work faster, it adds up. So not having to take my eye off the viewfinder because I know what button I'm hitting here, that's something that's really valuable, and it's things that more companies should start doing. Panasonic hasn't slouched on the video features either. Being able to shoot 4K60 is great to have and the built-in image stabilization means that you'll be able to capture some great clips even when you're handheld. I will say though, you'll want to stabilize this camera with a gimbal or tripod for the best results. The footage looks really clean at most of its ISO range, but the continuous autofocus 
definitely prove to be a challenge in some environments again. There's some menu options to mitigate this, but the experience is not perfect and often resulted in me having to do multiple takes. Again, especially if you're shooting video, single point or manual focus will lead to the best results. While on video, being able to shoot up to 180 frames per second in full HD is also something that is a bit of a differentiator for a camera like this. As expected, the footage was very clean, very usable, and something that I was impressed by when using this camera. There's a lot to love about the Panasonic S1R. The menu system is probably not one of them. It's really confusing. Not only are there menus, there are sub-menus. And when I was using this thing, it just felt like certain options were in sub-menus that didn't belong there, should be in another place. And I know what you're thinking. There's a manual, right? Why not just read the manual? Well, who reads the manual? In fact, there's two manuals with this camera. And even though I did peruse through them to get better acclimated with this camera, it still didn't feel like a great onboarding experience. This camera has all the ports you're going to need, whether it's a full HDMI, microphone in, or a headphone jack, or even USB-C, you have all the IO ports needed to get the job done for most of your shooting needs. The body is also covered with this rubber texture, covering the ports and around the grip that really feel solid in your hand. When you look through the viewfinder, you're welcome with an over 5.7 million dot OLED viewfinder. It is absolutely gorgeous to look through. Something that, you know, Panasonic is known for. They were known for display technology and you see that when you look through the viewfinder. Professionals can expect an XQD and SD card slot to manage all the data that they're capturing. And the battery is well over 3000 milliamps. It's about the size of a battery that you'd find in high-end smartphones. Quite simply, the battery lasts really, really long. It lasted the full duration of our shoot, whether we were shooting pictures or video, it lasted until we were done with the camera. When I got back to my office, there was still about 20% or less left on the battery itself. But the cool thing is because I was offloading the footage, I could just plug this camera into a USB-C port and have it charge while that was happening as well. There's one thing that a camera has or doesn't have, and that's a good shutter sound. And I'm happy to report the shutter sound on the S1R is fantastic. So for you ASMR aficionados out there, you can rest easy. When I downloaded the images into Capture One and looked at them, I was delighted. Yes, that's the feeling I felt when I was going through the pictures. As I was zooming in and making adjustments, being able to see how much detail was resolved in this camera made me smile. It's something that was very rewarding. But at the price point that this camera comes in at, you should expect no less. I guess you could say I'm glad that the files came out as great as they did. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say because of the size, weight, and industrial design, the Panasonic S1R is not a camera that makes you wanna take it everywhere with you. However, when you do have a project to deliver, whether it's for a client or for yourself, when things are on the line, you can look at the S1R with confidence, knowing that it's gonna deliver on your creative needs or get very, very close to it. After spending much time with the S1R, I can say the experience was rewarding. The design of the camera is definitely hefty, but features such as an XQD and SD card slot, full HDMI out, a top LCD, they all provide important and real world benefits that professionals will appreciate. There's still some room for improvement though, namely the menu system. It's something that could be refined and better communicated. Also, I'd love to see more information communicated on the top LCD when the camera is off. I feel like this is something that could be addressed in a firmware update. This is also one of those cameras that tethered shooters will really have fun with. To be able to capture these rich files into a program like Capture One and have someone preview the details while you're on location, you really get to see the power of a product like this. And if it wasn't clear already, this is not a beginner or even a prosumer camera. I'd argue that this is for those that are making money from photography or are absolutely looking to burn their money in photography. It rewards those that take the time to capture the intended shot they're going after, not necessarily those that are spraying and praying. What intrigues me the most is what the post-launch experience is going to be for the Panasonic S1R. This camera, and even the Panasonic S1 to some degree, are not priced or marketed to be big sellers out of the gate. 
This L-mount movement appears to be a slow burn that will build and build over the seasons to create a rich environment for professionals. What I'll be curious to see is if Panasonic will be able to create enough differentiation in an already competitive market. Thank you so much for watching the Panasonic S1R review. More importantly, I'd love to hear what you think. Is the L-mount movement enough for you to be enticed? Or are you already bought in? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when a new video has come out. I'm Gadgen. This was our Henry's review, and we'll see you next time.